What's going on guys? So I am here in Wichita, Kansas at a zoo that I have always wanted to tour. This is the Sedgwick County Zoo. And today is Tuesday at around noon in January, which means I pretty much have this entire zoo to myself. So I've never been here before. As I said, I've always wanted to tour this zoo. So we are gonna tour the zoo for the first time together. And right now we are here and we are making a beeline right for the amphibians and reptiles. Let's go. First, we're gonna stop and look at the flamingos. Hello, flamingos. Some of you aren't eating your colored shrimp. So with penguins, of which these are not, come on, Dave, get on the ball. So with flamingos at zoos, they actually dye their food this pink color to give their feathers this pink color. And well, some of them are obviously eating the dyed food, some of them are not, but in the wild, flamingos get their pink color from the shrimp that they eat otherwise they'd be white all right so as we're working our way to the reptile house here's the children's farm but look at this cool bridge but if you come over here and look off the edge of the bridge whoa look at all those koi and they're all like gaping their mouths at me as if to say something comment below let me know what these koi are saying to me all right look at this we're getting closer to the reptile house it's that way let's go oh but wait before we get to that reptile house we've got to go check out penguin cove and welcome to south america did you know that penguins go all the way up the coast of south america and they're even found in the galapagos let's go see these penguins oh look at this hello penguins look at this guy right here Meow. hi buddy Look at him. <laughs> oh, no, we're going back this way. Come on, let's go this way. Look at this, this guy's totally following me. This is awesome. But these are Humboldt penguins. And these guys spend up to 75% of their time in the water, like this guy. He's just right, hi buddy. I, I would like to give you pets, but there's this barrier here. These penguins are actually cave dwellers where they're found in the wild. And look at this enclosure. It's set up with these little caves on the side of a cliff, just like they would in the wild. That's a pretty cool penguin display. I like it. All right, on to the reptile house, for real this time. All right, um, we kind of got turned around. We came this way over, well, anyway, we're here. Reptile house is that way. We are getting closer. But first, we're gonna go check out North America, um, where we are right now. All right, let's go in here. Right in here, we have the river otters and apparently they're pet human oh they're being target trained look at that right up on the platform right into the carrier wow those are very well behaved otters oh and that one escaped into the water wow these otters really have that human trained well okay that is just cool he's target trained them to go down the slide okay we have so much to see and we still need to find that reptile house but this was super cool to see. Okay, not the reptile house yet, but here we have North American rattlesnakes, including the black-tailed rattlesnake, which is one of my favorite rattlesnakes. If you've been watching my videos for a while, every animal, reptile, everything I see is my favorite. And it's true. Everything is my favorite, including these guys. And these guys are native to the American Southwest. They are one of the most common rattlesnakes you're gonna find anywhere around Arizona, into California, New Mexico, down into Mexico. They are beautiful rattlesnakes and they are common. Hiding back in the corner back there is the only rattlesnake native to my home state of Minnesota. That is a timber rattlesnake and it is one of the most wide ranging rattlesnakes in the world. They go from, they range from New England down to Florida, across to Texas, and up into Minnesota. Talk about a common rattlesnake. And since we're here in Kansas, we cannot forget about the most common rattlesnake found in Kansas. This is a prairie rattlesnake or a western rattlesnake. And these are the most common rattlesnakes that you're gonna find here in the state of Kansas. These guys are pretty much everywhere. Such a beautiful rattlesnake, man, I love these. All right, that was cool to see a couple of reptiles here, but um, 
we're kind of lost in North America right now, and a lot of these animals are off exhibit. The bears are off exhibit, um, even the deer are off exhibit. So, <sighs> Unfortunately, I picked the wrong time of year to be here, but there's still a lot more to see here in North America, including that guy. That is a bald eagle. And when we talk about endangered species, you can't talk about endangered species without talking about the success stories out there. Back in the 60s and 70s, the bald eagle almost went extinct because of pesticides, including DDT. What was happening is, is that the poisons were getting into its food source, which is fish, and then the birds would eat those fish, then go lay their eggs. And because of the poisons, the eggs were so weak that they would literally almost burst in the nest. And it caused such a significant decline that they almost went extinct. Well, DDT was outlawed. Most pesticides were outlawed. All of them should be outlawed if you ask me. But this bird actually came back from the brink of extinction just 40 years ago. And now it's back to almost being a common sight here in North America. So when we talk about endangered species, you can't really talk about that without also talking about the success stories out there. So look at this, even in the middle of winter when there's absolutely nobody here, this is one of the most beautifully laid out zoos that I've been to and I really have to come back here one day in the summer to see it in all of its glory. But it's just a shame that I happen to be here in January when most of these displays are empty. But over there, I see something really super cool. I see bison eating um, Christmas trees, apparently. <laughs> Why not, you know? I mean, if seriously, what do you do with your Christmas tree after Christmas? Well, you come here to the zoo and you feed them to the bison. So these are also known as buffalo however they are not buffalo they never were buffalo the first europeans that came over and well let's face it raped the united states of all its natural resources and indigenous people they saw these and thought that they were just like the buffalo that were known from africa so they started calling these buffalo they're actually not buffalo never have been these are bison and then of course those people you know shot them all for fun and brought them to the brink of extinction all right we are entering Cougar Canyon. And there, right up there, are two cougars. I, I'm not going to make any cougar jokes. If you want to make a cougar joke, feel free to leave those in the comments. But there is the only lion native to North America. That is the mountain lion, or cougar, or puma. God, these guys are so magnificent. Oh, oh, I've been spotted. Okay, I am uh, all sorts of turned around now. Um, I think the reptile house may be that way. All right, we are heading in to the Asian Big Cat Trek. Wow, look at how cool this is. Okay, this building is a super cool design. So right up there, we've got these sliding glass doors and the cats can go from there, crawl around this um, catwalk, through those doors over here and into this enclosure. I've never seen this in a zoo before. This is so cool. So these are the Amur leopards. These are one of the rarest species of leopards, and they are the most endangered species of big cats in the world. In fact, look at this. The orange color is their historic range. The red color is their current range, but that's of all leopards. The Amur leopard has been reduced to this little area right here in China, when they used to range all throughout China. That's all that's left right there. In fact, these leopards are so endangered that their range has been fragmented, so it's going to be harder for them to find each other and multiply, and they only exist in less than 25% of their original range. And where they do exist is a tiny little protected habitat that is shared with the Amur tiger. So not only do they have a small fragmented range, but they also have to compete for food with another big cat. Okay, let's see here. We are now here. How did we get over here? The reptiles are over there. Okay, I'm so turned around. Ooh, gorillas. All right, we're heading into the Gorilla Forest Reserve. Um, whoa. Apparently the haunted Gorilla Forest Reserve. That was a little disconcerting. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely haunted. Look at her. So pensive, so thinking about the state of the world. 
who she should vote for in 2024, sick like the rest of us that we have to choose between these two candidates. A matchup nobody wants, not a single American, including this gorilla. Are you just as angry about that as we are? Oh, oh, oh I, I guess so. Yeah. Hi, buddy. You, you feeling okay? What's going on? What you thinking about? Huh? So comment below and let me know what this guy is thinking about. Look at those teeth. I don't know that I've ever been this close to a gorilla before. Oh yeah, a tasteful glimpse of his bottom for the ladies. What you thinking about, Silverback? I too am a Silverback. I mean, maybe not silver. I certainly have a lot of, well, hair on my back. Not as much as you, and it's not, you know, silvery like yours. And you're just gonna show me your butt again. Okay. All right, enough messing around. Let's get to that reptile house, but, ooh, elephants. Look at that beautiful dude eating his roughage. So that is an African elephant. You can tell by the size of the ears. African elephants have big floppy ears like that and Asian elephants have smaller ears. Dude, does that stick taste even really? I mean, well, you seem to be enjoying it. I love the way their ears just fold so nicely on top of their heads. I wish I had an appendage that I could use to pick things up with and I don't know where I'm going with this actually. Man, so there is so many elephants here. There's two over here, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six over here. This is a whole pack of derms. <laughs> See what I pack of derms? <laughs> Just oh man, Dave, you gotta quit with these jokes, seriously. Okay, this is pretty freaking cool. Look at that big lion just sitting up on top of that rock like king of the hill, and the female has to sit down below. No judgment. No commentary. That's just how it's happening here. All right, let's head into Australia. Oh man, are you kidding? Apparently Australia is still closed for COVID. Uh, something's telling me we're getting pretty close to the reptile house, which is right over there. Ha <laughs> ha, finally, let's go in. All right. Oh yeah. Not as different from us as you may think. That's... That's true. I hope it's warm in here. Oh, it is. It's so nice and warm. Look at this air duct. It's painted like a giant snake. What do we got over here? We've got soft shells, we've got river cooters, we've got musk turtles, map turtles, and a big old gar. What's back? Oh, yes. Now, this is so cool. You've got this whole display here that is completely open. There's no glass here for these Eldabra tortoises. Look at these guys just hanging out in their nice heated enclosure. So these guys are found off the coast of Africa on Aldabra Atoll. It's a small little island. And these guys are the largest animals in their environment. These are the megafauna of that island. And just like the Galapagos tortoises in the Galapagos, these are the tortoises that rule that island. This is a really cool enclosure for these tortoises. All right, and then you come around to this little cove in here and Oh, look at this. So there are two types of alligators in the world. American alligators that we have here in the US and the smaller Chinese alligator, which is critically endangered. But there he is, just kind of tucked away over there. And unfortunately due to habitat loss, increased agriculture, pesticides, the usual suspects, there are now fewer than 200 wild Chinese alligators left making them one of the most endangered crocodilians in the world. And unfortunately, if something isn't done, these guys will be extinct within our lifetime. But you come over here and we've got this entire bank of enclosures, including, oh my God, look at these, Sicilians. Now, what you're looking at there isn't his head. That's actually his tail. And his tail looks like a head because that's what the predators are going to go for, leaving his head safe for the Sicilian to make his escape. In the world of amphibians, there are frogs, there are toads, there are salamanders, there are newts, and there are these guys, Sicilians. These are amazingly cool. Then you come down here and look at this. We've got a tentacled snake, and they've got those little appendages on their nose. They can basically hone in on fish with electromagnetic sensors, just like sharks do. And look what we have right here. So in the United States, we have two species of boas. One is this guy, 
the rubber boa. There's actually a few of them in there. That's not all one snake. The other one is the rosy boa. The rosy boa is found in the southwestern United States. These guys are found from Nevada all the way up into Canada. And these are very cold loving, basically cold tolerant snakes. And they can withstand temperatures well below 50 degrees where other snakes can't. All right, so I know that there's iguanas in here. So I conned one of the zookeepers to go in there and flush him out. And there he is. That is a Jamaican iguana. It's also known as a Jamaican rock iguana. And what you're looking at is the most endangered iguana in the world. Zoos are going to be the last refuge for these animals. These are so critically endangered in the island of Jamaica that they're almost impossible to find now. And the only way that you can see one of these is in a zoo like this. Now, these guys are rock iguanas. They're in the genus Cyclura, and there's a whole bunch of rock iguanas all through the Caribbean. Almost every island in the Caribbean has a resident rock iguana. Good to see you, buddy. Sorry to disturb your slumber. All right, so we are moving on. Oh, yes. Hello, beautiful. This is Ophia Fagus Hana. This is the King Cobra. Now, there's a lot of talk about that these aren't actually cobras. Their physiology is very different than other cobras, and there's a lot of talk that these are more related to mambas than they are cobras. But just look at how big this one is. Her tail goes all the way back over there. These guys can get huge. They can get up to 18 to 20 feet, which is also very unlike other cobras. So there's going to be a lot of name changes coming up with this species because I think it's a misnomer to call these guys cobras. All right, guys, comment below. If we aren't going to be calling these king cobras anymore, comment below and let me know what you think we should be calling these snakes. Should we just be calling them kings? I don't know. Comment below. Let me know what you think. All right, buddy. You are beautiful. All right, we're moving on. All right, and then over here, we have a Gila monster. Now these are native to the American Southwest. I've seen these in Arizona before, but they do range as far north as Utah, but that's about it. But they also share their range with that dude right there. That is a Chuckwalla. And they're a little bit more widespread than the Gila monsters are, but they are also native to the American Southwest. So right over here, we've got the longest venomous snake in Africa. That is a black mamba. And they're called black mambas, not because of their kind of darkish gray exterior, but the inside of their mouth is jet black. And that's where they get their name, black mamba. And these guys grow huge. These guys get up to 14 feet. And these are the most feared snake in all of Africa. But right over here, we've got the other mamba. Look at that beauty. This is a green mamba. And these, unlike the black mamba, are called green mambas. Um, I, I, I guess because they're green. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good commentary there, Dave. So mambas have a neurotoxin, and it is a deadly neurotoxin. And what a neurotoxin does is it basically shuts down your central nervous system. And then your lungs don't work, and you basically suffocate because you can't breathe. And that's why these mambas are the most feared snake in Africa. And over here, we have one of my favorite snakes in the world. That is a Gaboon Viper. And if you've been watching Reptile Adventures, about a year and a half ago, I was in West Africa and we found one bigger than this in the wild. And I almost stepped on it being as big as it was because of that camouflage. They completely disappear in plain sight, just like this guy is doing. And if you look at the size of that head, on either side of their head, those are the venom glands, and they are huge venom glands. So if this guy bites you, he can deliver a potent amount of venom. You just don't want to get bit by this guy. So I've heard from a lot of people for a lot of years that the Sedgwick County Zoo is one of the best zoos in the country. And even in the middle of winter, in the middle of January, on a Tuesday afternoon, I had a blast here. So guys, there's lots more zoo tours and animal adventures and other videos coming to Dave Kaufman's adventure. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Give this video a like. And until the next zoo adventure, love the planet, feed your animal obsession, and rattle on.